Thank you for joining us for another Bible study session of the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated. And I'm thankful that God continues to keep and protect us during this season of the COVID-19. You're invited once this pandemic is over to join us once we open back up at 1667 South Lauderdale Street in Memphis, Tennessee. You're invited to join us any Thursday night between the hours of 7 and 8 p.m. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to rightly divide your word of truth so that we can obtain a clearer view of ourselves for the purpose of bringing about a cry from within for help from you in becoming the people that you would have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're studying by way of an approach called systematic theology. Systematic theology is any study that answers the question, what does the whole Bible teach us today about any given topic? We started out with uh, the doctrine of God's word, and that's where we are now. But under that, a subtopic is the word of God in written form, which is the Bible. And there are three other forms of God's word. Uh, we're studying what the Bible has to say specifically about what defiles a person. And our focus is found in Mark chapter 7, verse 14 through 23, which reads, And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There's nothing outside of a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defiles him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not into his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? And thus Jesus declared all food clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, and pride. And verse 23 says, all of these things come from within, and they defile a person. The human heart is sinful and produces all manner of evil desires, evil thoughts, and evil actions. Everything from murder to envy. Jesus had no illusions about human nature, as do some liberal theologians and humanistic teachers in this day and age. Jesus realized that man is a sinner and unable to control or change his own nature. And that's why Jesus came to earth to die for lost sinners. The Jewish dietary law, they were given by God to teach his chosen people to, for the purpose of making a difference between what was clean and what was unclean. Now, don't, no doubt, there were also some practical reasons involved, like sanitation or health. And to disobey these laws was a matter of ceremonial defilement. And that was an external matter. Food ends up in the stomach, but sin begins in the heart. The food we eat is digested and the waste is evacuated. But sin remains and it produces defilement and eventually death. Tonight we're looking specifically at what the whole Bible teaches us about envy. Envy is derived from a classical word denoting an intense feeling an eager desire of ill will or malice. Titus chapter 3 verse 3 
says, for we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our lives in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. Envy means the desire to deprive another individual of what he has. It was out of envy that the chief priests delivered Jesus up to be crucified. Matthew 27 and 17 says, So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? Verse 18 says, For he knew that it was out of envy that they delivered him. It's important that we are careful how we let envy show in our lives. Someone might decide to use it against us. I believe that's called exploiting our weaknesses. Paul said that out of envy, some even preach Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 says, and because of my imprisonment, many of the Christians here seem to have lost their fear of chains. Somehow, my patience has encouraged them, and they have become more and more bold in telling others about Christ. Verse 15 says, some, of course, are preaching the good news because they are jealous of the way God has used me. They want reputations as fearless preachers, but others have pure motives. Preaching because they love me, for they know that the Lord has brought me here to use me to defend the truth. And some preach to make me jealous, thinking that their success will add to my sorrow here in jail. Envy is the emotion of coveting what someone else has. Envy is having a difficult time seeing someone else with something you don't have but desire to have. James chapter 4 verse 2 and 3 says, Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, and yet ye have not. Here's the reason. Because ye ask not. And verse 3 says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss for the wrong motive, that ye may consume it upon your lust. I would that you would give an ear of how the message version says that. Uh, or rather, read it for yourself. The message version really, really uh, makes it plain. Let me give you an example. As flies leaves the buzzing sound and lights upon the corrupted and decomposed parts of a dead animal, so delight in the filth that is hard to keep them away from. So is envy in a man. Man has no pleasure in good if he's filled with envy, but only what is diseased and corrupted. Where can you find envy? We can find envy in the story of Cain who was the first murderer, who slew his brother at the instigation of envy. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 says, Time passed, and Cain brought an offering to God from the produce of his farm. And I'm reading from the, the uh, message version. Verse 4 says, Abel also brought an offering, but from the firstborn animals of his herd, choice cut meat. 
God liked Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering didn't get God's approval. Cain lost his temper and went into a sulk. God spoke to Cain. Why this tantrum? Why are you sulking? If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you don't do well, sin is lying in wait for you, ready to pounce on you. It's, it's out to get you, and you've got to master it. Envy can move you to become to becoming its instrument of murder simply because someone through obedience has gained God's favor and you didn't. Envy will cause us to hold back our best, even from the Lord. We will, one thing, we will keep the best of our years, of our lives from the Lord the best of our time from the Lord, the best of what God has given us, we will keep it from the Lord. Not realizing that whatever we choose to hold back out of selfishness becomes a waste and useless to us. The way to master envy is by obedience. We can also find envy in the dark and gloomy, revengeful spirit of Saul, who under the influence of envy plotted for years to slaughter King David. 1 Samuel chapter 29 verse 5 says, uh, uh, and, and this, you, you know, you have to be careful what others say that will enrage you. Someone said, is not this David? of whom they sing one to another in dances, saying Saul slew his thousand and David his 10,000. The, 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 the issue is Saul got envious of David because David had slew many more of the enemies than he had. And they were singing about it. we'll find envy in the king of Israel when he longed for the vineyard of Naboth and shed his blood to gain it. First King chapter 21 verse 1 tells us, Naboth, a man of Jezreel, had a vineyard on the outskirts of the city near King Ahab's palace. One day the king talked to him about selling him his land. I want it for a garden, the king explained, because it's so convenient to the palace. He offered cash, or if Naboth preferred, a piece of better land in trade. But Naboth replied, no, not on your life. That land has been in my family for generations. It's an inheritance. So Ahab went back to the palace angry and sullen, and he refused to eat and went to bed with his face to the wall. Envy can cause you to lose your appetite. You can't sleep at night because of envy. Your whole attitude towards life turns sour, and you become bitter because of envy, because you didn't get what you wanted, because somebody else has what you want and they won't give it to you, or sell it to you, or trade it to you in that case. Yes, it was in envy that perpetuated the most appalling crime ever planned in hell or ex executed on earth that caused the sun even to refuse to look or at which nature gave signs of disgust by rendering uh, the rocks broken. I mean the execution of Jesus Christ. It was mentioned earlier that the Jews gave up Jesus because of envy. 
The man who keeps busy helping the man below him won't have time to envy the man above him. There is a walk that leads away from envy. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26, the New American Standard Version says, If you live by the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. 1 Peter 2 and 1 uh, and 2 says, Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word of God, so that you may grow thereby in respect to salvation. Second Peter chapter three, verse 18 says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to him be both glory now and forever. Amen. If I was at Mount Sinai on a Thursday night, I would have to say one Friday, on an old rugged cross, on a hill called Calvary. Jesus Christ hung, bled, and he died to deliver us from the penalty of sin. And the Holy Spirit is working feverishly to deliver us from the power of sin. And one day, we will be glorified and we will be with God because of how we learn to live today based upon the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus on Calvary provided our justification. The Holy Spirit from Calvary to his return is working to sanctify us, to set us apart for God so that one day we will be God's glory. We will be present with him. And again, to God be the glory forever. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. I pray that God will give the increase and bless you in a mighty way that uh, we all can become less en envious because sin is waiting to pounce on us when we give sin by way of envy the least bit of opportunity. Well, i see you next time. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until then, so long.